Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. We'll start the timer and we're going to talk in this video about the third type of 6-4, which is known as the pedal 6-4. We've already covered the cadential and the passing 6-4s. This is the pedal 6-4. Uh, if you remember the passing 6-4, passing had to do with notes either going up or down by step. Pedal has to do with notes staying in the same place. Just like if you imagined hitting the sustain pedal on a piano, it sustains the same note. So I'll show you the most by far common uh, type of 6-4, of pedal 6-4 that is, and that would be this. We start with a tonic chord, and then we're going to use a subdominant pedal 6-4 in between. Remember, 6-4s are non-functional, so you have to indicate that by putting them in parentheses and indicating the type. And here we go. All of these are going to have a bass note of C. That's what makes this a pedal 6-4. And then I'm going to voice the two tonics this way, like that, E, G, E, G. We'll use the same voicing. Typically in pedal 6-4s, uh, the outer chords, the ones that uh, surround the 6-4, are the same chord and have the same voicing. And then the one in the middle is a subdominant 6-4, which is an F major, and it's going to be an F major in um, second inversion. That's F-A-C. The C will go here. It is a 6-4 chord after all, and I'm going to clean it up while I say this. 6-4 uh, chords are in second inversion, and the doubling rules for 6-4s is to double the fifth. We've now done that. So now we need an F and an A, and here we go. Here they are right there, D, F, A. That's our root position uh, followed by a pedal 6-4 back to root position. What makes this a pedal 6-4 is that the bass stays the same throughout. Now this is the least common type of 6-4, but we do need to know about it because you will see it from time to time. And then there's something about pedal 6-4s that you do have to watch out for when you're writing them. Not really watch out for, but just think about this because it makes it really easy. There will always be a note that stays the same. The bass will always stay the same because it's a pedal. And then there's going to be two notes that always sort of go up and down, and here they are, like that. They'll go up by step and then come back down by step. They won't always be in the uh, treble clef like it is here, but you'll always have two voices that do that and then two voices that stay the same. So it sort of makes like a little a little house shape, I guess you could say. Uh, it's not the best looking house, so I'm going to get rid of it. But um, that's what they always look like on the staff, at least. So just to quickly summarize here, the concept is quite easy. It's just a matter of fitting it in your brain and then writing it a few times. That the pedal 6-4 is a 6-4 um, in between two functional chords, which all have the same bass note. And this is by far the most common type. I'll show you the other type that's second most common, then you probably won't really see any other pedal 6-4s other than the two that I'm going to show you here. So we have the subdominant 6-4, and I'm just going to write the uh, base or the Roman numerals here, like this, that, that, and that. So if we're looking at a dominant chord, let's still think in C major, the bass note's going to be a G, so this would be a G major chord, this would be a C over G and this would be a G. So the bass note's going to be the same through all three of those chords, and this would be our pedal 6-4. And then the last thing about 6-4s here, we will have one more video to cover sort of the phantom 6-4 that I don't really believe exists, but we will talk about it. But when you're indicating 6-4s, uh, always make sure that you indicate their non-functionality by either put, putting them in parentheses, or if it's a cadential 6-4, you use the 6-4-5-3 to indicate what's actually going on. Thank you.